couldn't do that before because we didn't know the angles of incidents that were necessary to open these things up. And you couldn't do that with the platonic solids because the platonic solids were averages and approximations. Here's another thing, and I, I said we were moving on, but platonic solids, let's go back to that. Platonic solids, if you don't know, yes, these are real, that is the actual, that's probably the one thing he got correct in this entire three hours. They are actually called platonic solids. What do we use them for? Well, they're actually just shapes. That's it. But these shapes are just what we considered um, very stable shapes. The pyramids, a tetrahedron, is a very symmetrical shape. It's a 3D triangle. That's all it is. A tetrahedron is an equilateral triangle in 3D. There are other shapes called isocahedrons, dodecahedrons. There's things called buckyballs. If you like carbon nanotubes and things like that, go look up the buckyball. These are just standard geometric shapes. There's nothing esoterically special about them. We're not hiding another area of mathematics. If you want to go look up geometry and differential geometry, it's all there. You can thank Riemann for doing all of that. I use it every day. In fact, it's right behind me. So we're not actually, we're not hiding shapes from people. We're not, we're not lying to you about the math. <laughs> this is, again, the same guy who does not believe in calculus. Why would you believe whatever he says about the platonic shapes? It's a very archaic way of looking at geometry. They, like I've said a number of times, you show me a real straight line in nature. If everything in the nature, if everything in the universe... Everything is expressed in motion. All motion expressed in waves. All waves were curved. We're not even going to touch on the motion thing. Because that comes up later. And it comes up in such a way that I'm forced to talk about it. But the waves. All waves are actually not curves. <laughs> Terrence. There is a such thing called a square wave. Where it's quite literally boxed. The only nature to the wave that we actually care about is its periodic nature. It has an amplitude, it's got a frequency, it's got a wavelength. That's it. Those are waves. We don't actually care about the shape of the wave. That is something else. The shape of a wave or a signal is just determined by whatever mechanism created it and how it's modulated. Does the amplitude change? Okay. Does the frequency change? Sure. Does a wavelength change? Okay, that's the distance between troughs. You can have sawtooth waves that are triangular. Again, he keeps talking about... This is what we call Fourier transforms. Again, look this up, please. We've already done this math, so you don't have to do it. Some things are periodic, some things are not. End of story. But we're going to get to the fact where he says that Newton's first law of motion is wrong only because he interprets it as it just being in a straight line even though we're on a planet moving in a circle whatever every action has an equal and opposite reaction so the greater the action the greater the reaction the greater the reaction the greater the resistance the greater the resistance the greater the curvature because the universe is based off of equanimity which einstein left Oh nope, I'm not gonna Google equanimity. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm not looking that up. Whatever the other dictionary is, I'm pretty sure. They all had a, a team meeting, they workshopped this, and they pretty they looked up what actually is equanimity.